Good Wednesday morning. You've probably heard about pyramids in Egypt and how the kings and the pharaohs were buried there, along with their wives, their slaves, and all the worldly possessions to take into the next life. Or you've probably heard about people being buried in their luxury cars or their diamonds. Well, there was a Texas rancher, and he was visited by an angel, and the angel told him he was going to die soon. So he asked the angel, what can I take to heaven with me? And the angel said, you can't take anything to heaven with you. And he said, I want to take something. And he argued with the angel, just let me take one thing. So finally the angel got special permission for the man to take one thing to heaven with him. Well, soon after that, the man died. And when he got to heaven in the holy gates, he had a suitcase in his hand. And the gatekeeper said, you can't come in here with a suitcase. You can't take anything to heaven. And the man argued with him, and he said, I have special permission. Well, the angel was summoned and confirmed that the man did indeed have a special permission to bring one thing into heaven with him. So the gatekeeper said, okay, open the suitcase. What's in it? So the rancher opened the suitcase, and inside were bricks of solid gold. Lots of them filled the whole suitcase. And the gatekeeper sort of shook his head and he looked at the angel. Then he said to the man, really? Pavement? Well, in Revelations, it talks about the new Jerusalem and how the streets are going to be made of gold. Silly rancher, you can't take anything to heaven. You don't need anything. God is there and he's provided everything that we need. But you can take, you can't take anything to heaven, but you can leave things behind and things that are significant. For one thing, you can leave your worldly treasures. However, King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes this, all of this is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool? Yet he will have control over all the work into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a man may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. And then he must leave all he owns to someone who has not worked for it. Well, if your children are like mine, they don't even want my worldly treasures. They don't mean the same thing to them as they meant to me. And if they did want them, they may not have room for them. But there are things that we can leave behind that are meaningful and significant. My mother was a godly woman. She loved the Lord. And she, her greatest desire was for her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her great-great-grandchildren, would love the Lord too and serve him. She wrote down different stories of her life to pass on to, I guess, anyone that would benefit from them. In fact, this is what she said. I've decided to tell my life's experiences, hoping it will help others. Just help others. Just because you're a Christian person doesn't mean things are always roses. I've experienced Christ who has come into my life and known God was the one to look for for help and happiness. I want to share one of the stories that she wrote down of her life experiences with you. I'll just read it the way she wrote it. It was time for the first of our little girls to start school, but there was no money for school clothes. My husband was laid off from the factory and was only drawing unemployment. Our little girl had only one pair of panties, and they were worn thin. She needed one additional pair. That way I could keep them washed so she could have a clean pair each day. That week, when Earl had to go to town to sign up for his unemployment check, the girls and I rode along. As we walked past the 10 cent store, a sign caught my eye, back to school sale. There before me was a whole table full of white panties, just my daughter's size, and only 19 cents. Only I did not have. 19 cents. You see, I had prayed and prayed for God to let Sharon have just one new pair of white panties for school. 
As I sewed her dresses out of some material I had, I prayed. I had faith, strong faith, and I prayed and prayed just to be able to buy one new pair of white panties for Sharon. So you can imagine how I felt to stand in front of a table full of marked down panties and not even have 19 cents to buy one pair. Luke eleven ten says, Everyone who asks receives, all who seek find. The door is open to everyone who knocks. I thought the table full of panties was God's answer to my prayer. Surely he would want me to have a pair of those white panties. I could not see that it would be wrong to take just one pair there were so many. I folded one pair real neat so it would fit in my purse. All of a sudden, my heart quit beating. Was I stealing? You see, I was raised by a godly mother who loved the Lord and had taught us not to take anything belonging to others. My mind raced. You know that stealing. And if you walk out this door, you'll be caught in what will happen to your children and what will your family think? I laid the pair of panties back on the pile and walked away, but I just could not stay away from that sale table. I picked up the pair of panties and then put them down again, arguing with myself. I did this several times, and finally I left them on top of the pile and walked out the door. Shortly, Earl drove up and we started home. I was crying. Earl wanted to know what was wrong, and I told him about the 19 cent sale. He was so quiet that I'm sure he felt terrible about it. When we reached home, I started to prepare lunch and soon forgot about the incident. We had plenty of food, our own butchered meat, and canned vegetables, plus a roof over our heads and our good health. I had a lot to be thankful for. However, I still needed one additional pair of panties for Sharon. We sat down to eat and suddenly there was a knock sounded on the door. I opened the door and there stood a stranger. He wanted to lease our farm for oil rights at $1 an acre and would pay us cash right on the spot. My husband leased out 120 acres to the stranger. He came, Earl came back to the table and said, hurry up and eat. We have $120 and we're going back to that sale in town and buy Sharon six pairs of panties. You see, God did answer my prayers. I know for sure that if I had stolen the 19-cent pair of panties, we would have not been visited by the stranger. By the way, they never did drill for oil on the farm. No, we can't take things with us to heaven. But yes, there are meaningful things that we can leave behind, King Solomon. Not worldly treasures, but treasures just the same. Telling our children about Jesus living a godly life of Jesus' example of love for one another, sharing our spiritual journey with others, and bring hope in the midst of despair, and choosing the right thing over what our desires are, or our personal gain, and seeing others as Jesus sees them, and reaching out to those who have human needs and spiritual needs being a reflection of Jesus and telling his good news of salvation to all those that God brings onto our path. These are treasures indeed. These are treasures that can be life-saving and they can be life-changing for the good. These are treasures that we should leave behind. Amen.